saving the game, Snake? Hey, Snake, you ever heard of Godzilla, King of Monsters? No. What is it? It's a movie. You haven't seen it? Nope. It's about this monster called Godzilla who grows to an enormous size in a nuclear test and goes on a rampage in Tokyo. Nuclear test, huh? Then the Marshall Islands must be crawling with giant monsters right about now. It's just make-believe. Maybe that's why my pants have been so tight lately. Snake, it's a movie, not a report out of Los Alamos. I know. So then what happened? Godzilla is immune to all weapons, and humanity has no way to stop the monster. Dr. Sirizawa develops a new type of weapon, but meanwhile Godzilla is getting closer and closer to Tokyo, obliterating everything in its path. It was originally a Japanese movie, but they made an American version, too. I recommend seeing the original Japanese one if you ever get the chance. It's mostly mindless fun, but it's also got a serious anti-nuke message as well. Where can I see the original? You'll just have to go to Japan. Really? That's too bad. Well, if you wait 40 years, you might be able to see it in America, too. Why is that? 2004 will be Godzilla's 50th birthday. You think they're still going to be making Godzilla movies, then? Of course. Everybody loves Godzilla. You sure know a lot about movies. I don't suppose you're the movie-watching type, are you? Not really. Okay, then I'll tell you everything I know. When the going gets tough, movies can save your life. It's always good to be able to look at things from a different perspective when you get in a jam. That's the magic of movies. No kidding. Well, I guess it might at least make a nice distraction. That's the spirit, Snake. Have a little fun. Sokolov should be at the abandoned factory to the north, so head in that direction. Snake, intelligence indicates that that area is outside the enemy's cordon, so you shouldn't have any unexpected encounters with enemy patrols. I think it will be a good idea to take this time to get accustomed to using your camouflage, hunting for food, and navigating the survival viewer. If you have any questions about camouflage or CQC, ask the boss. The boss's frequency is 141.80. Paramedic is the medical correspondent for this mission. Ask her about hunting for food and medical treatment. Also, she has documents detailing flora and fauna in the operation locale. Contact her if you need detailed information on any of the plants and animals in your area. Paramedic's frequency is 145.73. That area is home to the reticulated python. The reticulated python is said to be the longest snake in the world. The biggest ones can grow up to 10 meters in length. Although they're not poisonous, they're still very dangerous, so be careful around them. They have a highly ferocious temperament, and they can swallow whole, even large animals like deer and pigs. Their most distinguishing feature is the mesh pattern of their scales. This pattern acts as a highly effective natural camouflage. If you think there might be a reticulated python about, pay close attention to your surroundings. Otherwise, you could get bitten before you even know it's there. It's a huge snake, but you should be able to capture it alive by using the tranquilizer gun. I'll bet if you capture one and throw it at an enemy, it'll give them a good scare. Right. But how do they taste? Huh? Do they taste good? You're actually going to eat one. Why else would I be asking? Cannibal. What was that? Nothing. Let's see what the guide says. Ah, you're in luck. It says they taste pretty good. Good. I can hardly wait. Ugh. Camouflage is an indispensable tool when you're sneaking through the jungle. To use camouflage, first press the start button to go to the survival viewer. Then select camouflage and press the enter button. Select Uniform to select Battle Fatigues, and Face to select Face Paint. Choose Battle Fatigues that match the surrounding environment. The most effective camouflage is attained by selecting fatigues that blend in with the environment. Camouflage patterns that stand out in your surroundings will attract attention. Visibility is poor in the jungle, so you'll be finding yourself in a lot of unexpected encounters. 
Naturally, this means that close quarters combat will be more important than ever. So I'll have plenty of chances to use CQC then. That's right. In proximity encounters, firing a gun isn't necessarily the best response to every situation. It's only one option among many. Rather than taking the time to draw, aim, and fire a gun, engaging your opponent in hand-to-hand -hand combat can sometimes be a faster and more reliable way of subduing him. Besides, in a sneaking mission like this one, it's too dangerous to go around firing your gun. You'll end up revealing yourself to the enemy. Yeah, I know. You created CQC to deal with exactly this type of situation. With your help, of course. In a battle situation, you'll only have a split second to decide how to attack. Use the weapon button to attack using a weapon, and the CQC button to attack using CQC. Press the CQC button once to throw a punch. Pressing it multiple times in succession will allow you to deliver a combo attack. But striking your opponent is just one aspect of CQC. It doesn't really start to shine until you've got your enemy in a hold. Press and hold down the CQC button to grab your opponent with your right hand. From there, you can use the left analog stick to knock your opponent off balance and throw him to the ground. This can be used to knock an opponent out in a single blow. If you don't press the left analog stick, grapple with your enemy until you're behind them and can get your knife to their throat. Grabbing an enemy from behind and holding your knife against his throat will render him virtually powerless. From this point, there are several things you can do. Press the CQC button hard to slit the enemy's throat with your knife. Move the left analog stick and press the CQC button to throw the enemy to the ground. Lightly tap the CQC button rapidly to choke the enemy. You can use this to knock him out or even kill him if you do it long enough. By continuing to hold down the CQC button, you can move around while keeping your grip on the enemy. By pressing the weapon button, you can aim your currently equipped weapon at another enemy. With their comrade acting as a human shield, the enemy will be reluctant to attack you. Move the left analog stick around to press your knife against the enemy and demand information. You'll be surprised at how much you can learn this way. But don't get too complacent. While your enemy may be powerless in your grip, he'll use any opportunity he can to counterattack. I see you've captured a giant anaconda. The giant anaconda is believed to be the largest snake in the world in terms of weight and diameter. It's not poisonous, but its large size makes it extremely powerful. They say it even eats crocodiles. Its only natural predator is man. And snake. And snake. The giant anaconda is a very large snake, but you should be able to capture it alive using the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So how does it taste? I knew you were going to ask me that. Glad I didn't disappoint you. So? Well, the guide says it tastes all right. Good. I'll have to try some. Ugh. Do you want to save? Snake, do you know the creature from the Black Lagoon? Nope, never heard of it. These scientists are investigating a place deep in the Amazon called the Black Lagoon, and they get picked off one after the other by this fishman thing. And there was this scene when the heroine is going for a swim, and the creature sneaks up on her from underwater. Oh, I thought my heart was going to stop. 
I mean, of course, the 3D effects in It Came From Outer Space were a lot more intense, but... It wouldn't be referring to you coming from outer space, would it? How rude! Why do you say that? Because no one on Earth could be as charming as you. <sighs> Fine. I'll just get to the point, Snake. Be careful of what's around you when you're in the water. Just imagining me swimming in those jungle rivers makes me think of you being attacked by a fish man. I appreciate the concern. Fishmen aren't the only things that'll attack you in the water. Really be careful out there. Okay. And don't be attacking any pretty girls going for a swim, either. Are you calling me a fish man? You started it. I see you've caught a tree frog. The tree frog is a green frog that's found throughout Asia. It's arboreal, spending most of its time in shrubs and bushes. Use the tranquilizer gun to catch one alive. I bet you could scare an enemy good if you toss one at him. But the tree frogs that live in that jungle are a lot bigger than ordinary tree frogs. They've got an appetite, huh? You've got a one-track mind, don't you? But seriously, that is one theory. However, there are people who think it's a mutation caused by nuclear testing and waste from the research facility. Do you think they're safe to eat? Is that all you ever think about? What else is there? Lots. Like what? Like why a frog would get so big in the first place. Whether it's a temporary phenomenon created by a unique environment, or a permanent mark of evolution, or a product of the toxic waste coming out of the research facility. If it is the waste that's causing it, then it means humans are interfering with the ecosystem. It really makes you think about the changing relationship between... This isn't interesting. Oh, fine. Be that way. So, how about it? You mean, is it edible? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess it's probably okay. Probably? I don't know. The guide doesn't say anything. Pretty useless guide, if you ask me. Well, try one for dinner and you can help improve it. I see you've captured an Indian gavial. The Indian gavial is a crocodile that originally lived in freshwater regions in India and Nepal. Why are Indian crocodiles way out here? 
There are captive crocodiles that were brought here for research purposes but escaped and became wild again. Indian gavials are large creatures. Adult males grow to over six meters in length. You'll never catch one alive, even if you use the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So, how do they... Taste? Yes, I did look into that. You know what they always say. Tastes like chicken. Sounds delicious. But be careful when capturing an Indian gavial. Normally they're cowardly creatures, but the ones in the forest there are belligerent. Apparently they attack humans. What do you mean? They weren't the direct subject of any serious research, but some think they may have become violent as a side effect of the atomic research that was conducted nearby. I see you've got yourself a Baltic hornet's nest. Baltic hornets are a variety of hornets that inhabit that area. The difference between them and other hornets is that they produce honey in their nests. Inside the nests are larvae, pupa, and adults. You can eat them all. In particular, the honey you find inside the nest is delicious and full of nutrients. It's easy to digest and helps pep you up when you're feeling tired. In short, it's the perfect survival food. Honey can also be used as a burn ointment. When honey is applied to a burn, it creates a protective coating over the skin. When you knock down a hornet's nest, a burn ointment will appear along with it, so don't forget to pick it up. Of course, the hornets aren't going to give up their nest without a fight. If you knock a nest down, a large swarm of hornets will come flying out, so be careful. Snake, that area is inhabited by magpies. Magpies are members of the crow family. They're distinguishable by their beautiful dark blue and white bodies and their long tails. Their favorite food is insects, but they'll also eat small fish, acorns, and fruit. They're omnivores, which means... They'll eat anything. Right, just like you, huh? If you use the tranquilizer gun, you should be able to capture magpies alive. Okay, so how do they taste? You always ask me that. Naturally. So? I've never heard of anybody actually eating a magpie, but I suppose there's no reason you couldn't. You don't say. Oh.
disgusting. I see you have a calorie mate. Calorie mate? The thing you're holding now? Oh, the little block that looks like a cookie? It was pretty good. Wasn't it? Yeah, but what the hell was it? What? Never seen anything like it. What? Hold on. You just ate something without even knowing what it was? Yeah. It looked good. Ugh. So, what was it? Calorie Made is an energy supplement that contains all the proteins, lipids, vitamins, carbohydrates, and minerals needed for a balanced diet. It's a well-balanced food. Because of that, it's just perfect for giving your body the nutrition it needs in combat. It sounds like a space-age food. Real astronaut food is not very good, but that should taste fine. Yeah, and it'll help balance out all this jungle food I'm eating. It's easy and quick to eat, so it's perfect when you're running late for an important mission in the morning. I've never been late for a mission. Really? Aren't you always keeping people waiting? Huh? It's easy to keep track of your calorie intake and receive the nutrition your body needs, so it's good for losing weight, too. All of the geisha girls in Japan use it for watching their calories. Is that why they're all so slim? Right. And any diet where you eat nothing at all is bad for the body. I see. You seem to know a lot about Japan, don't you? Yes. I love Japan. Looks like you found a galova. Galova? Yeah. It's a fruit that's found only in that region. It's related to the jackfruit, which is commonly found in Southeast Asia. Jackfruit, huh? Yep, he's a cannibal. Huh? I didn't say anything. No, I'm sure you... I said, I'm sure you'd like it. Oh. Golova means head in Russian. It's probably called that because the fruit grows to about the size of a human head. It's supposedly pretty good to eat with a uniquely sweet flavor. The fruit itself is fairly large, so you can make a meal out of it. Golovas grow directly off the trunk of the tree. If you're running low on stamina, it might be a good idea to keep an eye on the tree trunks. You should be able to find Siberian ink cap mushrooms growing in that area. The Siberian ink cap is a mushroom from the ink cap family. Its life cycle is transitory. As soon as the spores mature, the cap starts to turn black, liquefy, and melt away. And that's why they call it an ink cap? That's right. It doesn't really turn to liquid, but you get the idea. In its immature state, before it melts away, it's valued as a source of food. Just be sure not to eat them while you're drinking alcohol. Why is that? Ink caps contain coprin, which inhibits the function of aldehyde dehydrogenase. This prevents the body from breaking down alcohol, causing a buildup of acetaldehyde. Meaning? Meaning it will give you the hangover from hell. Oh. Wait a minute. What? You think I'd drink alcohol in the middle of a mission? Wouldn't you? Hell no. Well, I'm knocking a shot back now. What? Just teasing you. No. Oh, come on. Where's your sense of humor? I need a drink.
Major, I've spotted two enemy soldiers. They're probably KGB troops sent to guard Sokolov. AK-47s and grenades. Snake, your presence in Soviet territory is already a violation of international law. You can't let the Kremlin find out that the CIA and the American government are involved. Contact with the enemy is strictly prohibited. Don't engage them in battle either. This is a stealth mission. Got that? The Major is right. The point of this mission is to sneak through the jungle without being seen. The success of the mission depends on how well you use your camouflage. Change your camouflage by selecting Camouflage from the Survival Viewer. The Uniform option lets you pick your uniform, while the Face option lets you change your face paint. Choosing camouflage that blends in with your surroundings will help you conceal yourself more effectively. Also, don't forget that anything that moves will stand out in the jungle. If you just stand up and run around like an idiot, you're bound to be spotted. But if you crawl instead, you should be able to sneak by without being noticed. You can see how effective your camouflage is by looking at the camo index. The camo index shows how well your current camouflage blends in with the surrounding area. The higher the value, the harder you are to spot and vice versa. The key is to make yourself one with nature. Keep that in mind as you go along, okay? You want to say? Snake, have you heard of It Came From Outer Space? Yeah, you told me already. So this astronomer sees a meteor, but it's really an alien spaceship, right? And the aliens start replacing the townspeople with clones and forcing them to help repair the ship. The 3D effects were quite realistic. I've got all the real I can handle here in the jungle. No, you don't get it. Precisely because it's realistic. With the images jumping out of the screen at you, it makes for a nice escape from reality. I have to admit it made my eyes tired, but it was really intense. Unfortunately, they don't make very many of those movies anymore. When did it come out? I was still in college, so probably about ten years ago? Guess I'm out of luck then. You know, they're coming out with household versions of video cassette recorders. One day you'll be able to see old movies anytime you want. It'll be like having a movie theater in your own home. Really? It's like if you had a record with movie film etched onto it instead of music. It'll work the same way. You're kidding. No, really. And someday they might make movies where you control the characters yourself. Sounds like magic. It'll happen. Make sure you stay alive to see it, Snake.
Who's that? Who's that? Oh!